$6,767 is how much I was took for, how much I was scammed for. Um, it's not a good feeling. You know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you don't like to fail. You don't like to be taken advantage of. Sometimes you miss it. Sometimes you just don't see it. And that's exactly what happened to me. At this point, like I already knew that I had lost some money, but whenever I received this letter in the mail, it just confirmed just how ignorant that I was and how overly trusting that I was. And because of that, I lost over $6,000. And to be honest, probably a whole lot more if I'm able to calculate all the time that I've spent thinking about this and phone calls about this. So what I want to share with you today is how I lost $6,767 and what you can learn from it so that it doesn't happen to you. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Wealth Hacker TV, the channel dedicated to teaching you new ways to grow wealth that is not taught to you in schools or by your parents. I am your host, Jeff Rose. And what I'm talking about today, they don't teach you this in school. I don't care if you're in high school or college, private university. When we talk about working, when starting a business and working with relationships or partnerships and all the many different things that can happen with that. Like these are the things that you either learn the hard way, which I did in this experience, or you learn by seeking out mentors or seeking out professionals like accountants or attorneys that can give you guidance along the way. Now I'm grateful that I've had tons of amazing mentors that have prevented from me experiencing uh, being scammed or taken for uh, in the past. I mean, I've saved thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars because of these amazing mentors. But with this situation, even though I had a mentor that was speaking truth and just speaking some of the things I should be aware of, I didn't listen to all of that as much as I should. and. I didn't trust my gut, and probably even worse, I didn't trust my wife's gut when it came to this partnership. So what is this partnership that I'm talking about? If you don't know, I used to have a financial planning practice. I was a financial planner for 16 years. And as a financial planner, one of the ways I've grown my business was networking with other professionals in the area. You know, that was accountants, that was attorneys, uh, that was uh, payroll service providers, just you know, any professional that I could network with and just let them know about my services and the type of clients that I was working with and the, the type of clients that were a perfect fit for my practice. And then also to learn more about their business so I could send them the right fit type of clients too. So in that, you know, trying to form these strategic alliances and strategic partnerships, I had a, a friend approach me and I say friend and I'll say friend loosely. You know, this was someone that I went to high school with that I, that I knew that we had some mutual friends, really had stayed in contact for a while, but uh, he was in the insurance space and he basically came to me with a business proposition about adding an insurance division to my financial planning practice, which for me wanting to be the ultimate wealth planning, total comprehensive financial planning practice, I mean, it seemed like a perfect fit. And that's the part of the story where this all goes to you know what. So before I take on any new project, especially a partnership, I have a process that I go through. Uh, it's just this worksheet that I fill out. I'm gonna share more about that here at the end of this video and listing out all of the things, all of the criteria about this partnership that I would need to happen for it to be a success. And this is something that I do for every major decision. Went through that process and there was one thing, one thing that I wrote down that was my biggest, biggest concern. And I didn't put enough weight on that concern so I went ahead and said yes to this partnership. And like I said, it seemed like a natural fit to be able to offer 
additional services, additional products to our clients so that we, they could come to us for that one-stop shop of everything they need you know, with their financial planning needs. So to get this partnership up and going, we had to invest some initial seed capital. My portion was $2,500 that I put into this partnership. Now the agreement was that after we start earning some commissions and started getting some revenue, that that would be paid back within at least a year, if not 24 months. So it was like a short-term loan, $2,500 wasn't a lot of money at the time, and it seemed like this is going to be a great investment that'll have an amazing ROI. Uh, not so much. So as this partnership continued, uh, you know, the, the, the guy that, you know, the high school friend, the, the guy who approached me about this, it just didn't seem like he was getting a lot of work done. Like, you know, we didn't have a lot of contact, maybe checked in like once a week, once every few weeks, but I could see the deposits that were coming in, or I should say not coming in, into our account. And I just didn't know like what was going on because he had really sold how much business there was because he had a lot of experience, he had a lot of contacts, he had a big network, and he was so confident that we would be more than profitable, that we would make a lot of money, and I would make a lot of money by, by doing this. And after a year, that was not happening. What makes matters even worse, uh, I just have a, a soft heart for guys that you know, seem like that they're doing the work and just struggling to, to make ends meet. And my partner came to me and asked if I could loan him some money. And like I said, it was a time where I had the money to give. Uh, I don't mind loaning or giving, I should say, because I, I wasn't looking for a payback here. I just, I was gonna give him the money uh, and hoping that's would help out. Uh, what I did know that there was other things going on behind the scenes, but that was another $1,000 that I loaned him. And after, let's say another six months, I I'm trying to remember exactly, but it had been almost two years and uh, he just more or less like disappeared. Uh, didn't know what was going on. Uh, he wasn't returning texts. Like we weren't, uh, it just wasn't no communication and it just seemed like, all right, well that, I guess that business didn't work out. So then after that, I start getting bills or invoices from our tax accountant because you know we had a business going for you know one or two years and we had to file the tax returns. Uh, we also use this accountant to file for uh, opening our, our LLC, you know, getting our LLC started and the operation agreement. So like there was some fees there and uh, guess who had to pay all that? That's right, that fell back on me. So that was like another $1,200 had to pay there. And then later on, there was a, a, some sort of commission, I guess, that uh, some a policy that somebody took out, some business, and I guess they canceled the policy early. So there was a commission chargeback, which means guess who had to pay that? Me. Uh, and that was, I think, around $500 and it just kept adding up and kept adding up. So at this point, I've pretty much just written off. It's like, you know what, that's fine. I'm sure that he's in a tougher financial position than I am. Uh, I'm a believer in grace and forgiveness. So I just, I let it go. But then I get this. I get this letter in the mail and this just came, let's say a few months ago at the time it's recording. And basically what this is was a letter from Kroger's, which is a, a grocery, grocery chain. And it was showing that there was a check that was written that bounced, a return check. And what I found interesting about this check was that it came from the operating account of the insurance company that we had founded that I had shut down two years prior to this. Like we shut it down, uh, the, the bank uh, checking account, the bank accounts were closed, the business was closed, and yet there was this return check. And that initial fear was, did somebody get access to some of our old checks? But when I called Kroger's, I was able to verify they sent me a copy of the check that was cashed. And sure enough, it was from my former partner that wrote the check to himself uh, and as payroll, which there, there's no company, so you can't have payroll when there's no company. Uh, from there, I was able to contact the bank, and this is one of the benefits of being from a small town. Uh, this is where we moved from. 
the bank shared with me that there was another check that was written uh, somewhere else that he had cashed it uh, once again for payroll. Uh, so between these two checks combined, it was about I think twelve, thirteen hundred dollars that he uh, wrote to himself. That um, now my understanding is like I'm not on the hook for that, but if if I do have to pay that, I mean, if somebody has to pay that, it could be me. Um, I'm going to include that in the total because um, all the time that I've been on the phone uh, talking with uh, police officers and attorneys and Kroger's and the bank, I definitely have lost more than the $1,300 because there's been a lot of time and anguish just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Eventually I was able to verify that it was him that wrote the check. Uh, it wasn't anybody else. Somebody wasn't impersonating him because uh, to write these checks, he had to present his ID uh, and that's the only way they would have cashed these checks. So it, it was him and we've had uh, a discussion. So uh, he's aware of that. You know, We've let the authorities know in the event that he's trying to do anything else because obviously I don't want to be affected. I didn't mention this yet, but there's also a third partner involved. He didn't want to be affected. Uh, so this has been addressed as of now, but still it leaves a pretty, pretty salty taste in my mouth. And what I want you all to get out of this, you know, just to share with you, what are the, the four biggest lessons learned that I got from this experience of losing, being scammed out of over $6,000. All right, lesson number one is do not ignore the impact wealth action filter. So this is the process. This is a sheet that I fill out when I do any major project or partnership. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I was trying to identify you know, what were the success criteria that I needed for this partnership to be successful. And one of the biggest concerns that I had in this entire thing was what was his true motivation? Was he as motivated, determined, uh, willing to put in the work and the hustle that I was? And I wasn't 100% sure. My wife didn't think so. But that was one thing that I didn't put enough emphasis on. The other thing that I wrote down was, and a big question mark was, would this be a distraction on everything else that I was working on? So yeah, this was a great opportunity. It seemed like a natural fit, but could I just do more what I was doing with the financial planning practice and doing more you know, blogging and videos and online webinars or you know, doing this. And like, that was another big one that I, I almost felt like it was going to be a distraction, but there was something in me that still thought that this was something uh, that I needed to do. Probably just the excitement of starting another business, you know, it's like, cause every entrepreneur loves to start multiple businesses. Hindsight being 2020, uh, that one, yeah, that one uh, was one that I shouldn't have overlooked and should have thought about more. The second thing that I learned was just weighing the potential gains versus the potential losses. And this is another big one because one thing that I forget, uh, and my wife has to remind me of this all the time, is that I've spent the last 15 plus years, you know, even 20 years, building my reputation, building my brand, building my business. And a lot of other people want shortcuts to that. So instead of doing the work themselves, they want to piggyback off of other people that have already achieved that success. And I didn't feel that here um, and because I was just oblivious to it. And my wife saw it. And if I would have thought about, man, what is the potential gains here versus the potential risk, the potential loss, and you know, here as if, if I'm partnering with somebody that's going to be a distraction and if they've got some criminal activity or they have some other ulterior motives behind this and I just get sucked into that, uh, that was something that I didn't do a good enough job on and one that I don't ignore now. All right, the third thing that I learned, which this was a big one, is that you can't outsource a partnership. I'm a huge four hour work week guy. I love delegating, I love outsourcing, but in a partnership, 
man, you just can't do that. You can't just let somebody go do their own thing. You might have some success, you know, in the beginning, you might have some success for a long period of time, but if you think that you can just allow that person to do their own thing and you don't have, you know, quarterly check-ins and just know what each of you are working on, it's never going to work and it's never going to work the way that you think or you hope it's going to work out. You've got to be involved. You've got to know what's going on. And I know a lot of people, it's just easier. Oh, I just wanna go do the next thing. I wanna grow this, I wanna do this. And that that is me to a T, but I now recognize like you've got to be involved some way, somehow. All right, the fourth and final lesson that I learned is if you got a spouse, listen to your spouse. Men, listen to your wives. They have an intuition that we don't. And to her, this had red flag city all over it. I didn't see it, she did. Uh, let's just say that it's been a kind of a, I told you so. <laughs> uh, one of those things in our household ever since that's happened. But man, like she was right, she was spot on. Uh, yeah, and I'm grateful that I didn't lose as more than I did. Um, frustrated that I got myself in a situation, but man, once again, you know, this is just another valuable lesson learned. And as a wealth hacker, this is what you got to learn. You got to be willing to take the risk, you know. So I don't regret this at all because, man, I learned a lot, didn't lose my butt, and now it's giving me so much more experience and so much more valuable tools in approaching other partnerships and approaching other businesses and asking myself those hard questions. Is it worth my time? What is the potential reward versus what is the potential risk? And just truly identifying all the good things and the bad things that could happen with this partnership. So is this something that you have ever got yourself into? A situation where, you know, maybe you didn't get scanned, but you got yourself in a situation that you don't know how you got there, you're regretting how you got there, and now you wanna get out. I'm just curious to know if I'm the only one, which I know I'm not, but what's the situation that you got yourself in that you regret and what have you learned from it? Hope you enjoyed this video, y'all. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life and only you can make it awesome. Peace.